Good evening, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone, wherever you are. We are in a New Testament lesson called The Testimony of John. We refer to him as John the Baptizer. Some refer to him as John the Baptist. But we don't really see who he is and how he was spoken of in prophecy in Isaiah and in Malachi. And also, he was the forerunner of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, meaning that he was in prophecy. You know, there are four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What we need to understand is that these Gospels were written to the Jews. But the church had to pull out those things for the church from what was given to the Jews because some of the things that we should do was presented to the Jews in the Gospels. But it was written primarily to the Jew for them to understand who Christ was and is. And we're going to look at that briefly today. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand again to present your word in the way that you gave it, in the way that you left it, through the men that you say you inspired to do it. Thank you, Father, for not allowing me to make up stuff, but to present it as you left it, through your writers. We thank you, Father, for this understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's lesson is the testimony of John. Let's look at a uh, brief introduction of this lesson, and we probably can understand where we'll be going in this lesson. So let's look at a brief introduction in the testimony of John, which is the title of this lesson. John was an apostle. He was the son of Zebedee, and his mother was Salome, and his brother was James. You find that in Mark chapter 1, verse 19. Now also in John, you're going to find there are no parables like the other four Gospels. But there's only one parable in John chapter 1, verse 5. It's not a parable. It's a discourse. By our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's not a parable. John gives sequences of events in the life of Jesus. He gives an orderly sequence. And to understand his sequence, you have to study. We see the humanity of Christ in John. We see more humanity of Christ in John than any of the other four Gospels. The humanity is emphasized. John gave his reason for writing this gospel. There's no need to guess. He tells us why he wrote this gospel. You look at John chapter 20 and verse 31. Let's see why he said he wrote this gospel. But these things in this gospel that he's writing are written that you might believe. Now, remember, he's talking to the Jew that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. To so the Jews, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God. This is why he wrote this gospel and that believing and that believing, you might have life through his name. Now, that's why he wrote, according to his own words, the gospel. And this was directed to the Jews who had rejected the master. And a lot of us who can see, Paul brought it into the church. When he began to preach the gospel, to we, the Gentiles in the church. So therefore, 
We cannot toss any of this inside because it was written for our example and Paul brought it to us. The theme of the Gospel of John is the deity of Christ. That's the theme. The deity of Christ. Jesus did many other things and many other signs while he was here in the presence of his disciples, but they're not, not all recorded in the books. Now we need to understand that. Everything that he did, there's no record of it. It was not recorded. Let's look, let's look at uh, John 16, 28. Jesus gave his origin in John. Okay? Jesus told you where he's from. And he's telling you where he's going back to in John. And where he came from. I came, he says, from the Father. I came from the Father. And he says, I come into the world. And I come into the world from the Father. Then he says, again, I will leave the world and return to the Father. See, Jesus gave his origin and what he's going to have to do and what he will do when he's finished his work in the earth, he's going to return to the Father. Now notice when we get to our understanding in the church, when Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. And where is he now? He's sitting on the right hand of the Father, just sitting there waiting till he come again. And this is what Jesus said that he was going to do. This shows that Jesus was God in flesh. This shows that Jesus was God in flesh. In John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, identify Jesus as the Word of God. The Word of God. And he was with God from the beginning. So Jesus is the Word of God. But he was with God from the beginning. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. See, Jesus was God in the flesh. He was the Word. That's why you got to study to get the understanding. Jesus was the maker of all things. That's the Word. He was the maker of all things. That's the Word. Nothing would have been made without him, without the word. He made them all. He gave life to all things. He gave life to all things. John 1 is identifying. John 1 is identifying John the baptizer as the forerunner of Christ. John was chosen. To present the advent of Christ. He was told them to present, present the advent of Christ. So he didn't just sneak up. John announced him. He identified as a man. John is identified as a man sent from God. Notice this. John was a man. A man sent from God. That's in John chapter 1, verse 6. Verse 6. Then we go to Malachi. Malachi chapter 3, verse 2. It was revealed that a messenger from God would be sent to prepare the way of God for God and the Lord whom he would seek. Now, way back in Malachi. Now, Malachi was a book prior to Matthew. And it told that there would be a forerunner sent to announce the coming Messiah. In Malachi, verses 3, verse 1. So that's why it's necessary to study the scriptures. To show your own self approved rightly dividing the word of truth, a work that did not be ashamed. So you see, everything you study, 
from Genesis to Revelation, you're going to find Jesus Christ in there somewhere. If you don't find Jesus Christ in your study, go back and do it again because he's there. And you have to dig him out through study, prayer, and understanding. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Testimony of John. John chapter 1, verses 15 to 28 is the text. We're going to start with John chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. John bear witness of him. Of him. Who is this him? We're going to find out. John bear witness of him and cried saying, this was he of whom I spake. That means he didn't talk about him before. He that cometh after me is preferred before me for he was before me. See, John is making this clear. And of the fullness have all we received, grace for grace. Now, let's hear what he's saying. John bore witness, bear witness of becoming Messiah. See, the Messiah was coming to the nation of Israel, the coming Messiah. Remember when Jesus came? He said, I came not but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Remember that? That's what words of Jesus himself. Messiah and told and said that his he was the one who spoke. Now who, who was he talking about? He was talking about the Messiah. The Messiah was eventually revealed as who? Jesus. Jesus was preferred before John because he was before John. Why? Because he was in the bosom of a father. He was in the beginning. And of the completeness, that's talking about Messiah. All our needs and lawful wants are promised by the gospel. We're in there. We're in there. Grace upon grace, according to our needs. Grace upon grace, according to our needs. Now, this is where you got to get in there and look at this for yourself. You study. In James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. It's for your personal reading and personal study. And you will understand grace or grace. So that's why you get to study. No one can tell you everything. We can only lead you and guide you or you can look for yourself. No man can tell and reveal to you everything. You got to get it for yourself. No preacher, no teacher, no friend, no foe. You got to get it for yourself. That means you got to read and understand. You got that? John chapter 1, verse 17 is the next verse. No man has seen God. Now we first saw that back in the Old Testament. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Declared him. Is that right? That's in verse 18. How did he declare God? Well, let's look at 17 first and then go 18. The law which condemns in the moral life was given by Moses. The fullness of grace and truth came by who? Jesus Christ. Now we look at this. Verse 18, no man has seen God at any time. His only son has spoken of him. He declared him. He, he declared him. He spoke about him. He was in the bosom of the Father. See, the bosom is the middle part of the body. That's where you rest. When a, a woman is bearing her child, she laid that child on her bosom. And the son was in the bosom of the Father. From the beginning. The son, the son is the word of God. That became flesh. 
The Son is the Word of God that became flesh. God in flesh. God in flesh. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The Word was God. And guess, guess what happened? And the Word was made flesh. All things were made by him, as they were delivered unto him by his Father. No man knows the Son, but the Father. No man knows the Father, but the Son. And the only way we know them, that we have to be revealed, both of them, by Christ himself. So when you say, I have seen God, you can't. Jesus himself said, no man knows the Father, but the Son. And no man knows the Son but the Father. What does that mean? If I say I know Brother Washington, and Brother Washington has a son, and we're sitting there talking, and the son would say, no, that's not my father. I know him. You don't. You just know of him. But you don't know my father. We only know of God, but we don't know God. Only the son, according to the word of Christ, Knows the Father. Any man that the Father saved is the Son. And he, whomever he believe, reveal. If he don't reveal the Son to you or the Father, you'll never know him. God told Moses in Exodus 33 and 20. You cannot see my face. Isn't that something? You cannot see my face. A lot of people say, I have seen God. I have seen the Lord. We've been looking in the Old Testament scriptures. And God told Moses, no man can see me and live. What he's saying is no flesh can look upon him. For flesh is sin, sinful flesh. And when God came to this world, he veiled himself in that sinful flesh that he may see how we are. And those things that we got to know and those things we got to understand. Let's read verse 19 and 20. And this is the record of John. The record of John. This is what he left. This is what he recorded. This is nothing somebody made up. John did this. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? Who are you? And he confessed. And answered not, but confess, I am not the Christ. Now notice this. In John 5, 33, Jesus said unto those that sent men to question John. We're going to say this first. In John 5, 33, Jesus said unto those who have sent to question God. He said, you sent men unto John. And he bear witness unto the truth. Unto the truth. John 1 and 15. John bear witness of him. Who was this him he was bearing witness of? The Messiah. Of Jesus. The record of John was that he bore witness to the Jews through the, through the priests and Levites that were sent from Jerusalem to find out who he was. They were sent from Jerusalem to find out who John was. He told them that he was not the Christ, as they thought he was. Now, that was the reason that they thought that. In Luke 3, 15, all the people were in expectation of the Christ. In, these, in their hearts, they wondered if John was a Christ. That's what he sent to inquire. John told them that he was not the Christ. And they all came looking for the Christ. They thought it was John. You see how people get all conflicted when they don't understand? And these men knew the scriptures. The Pharisees knew the scriptures. And he interpreted this as being John. And John had to correct them. And that's why we got to study for ourselves to get our own understanding. We're going to look at verse 21. 
and 22. And they asked him, well, what then art thou, Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou then that prophet? And he answered them, I am not. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may go give an answer to those that sent us? What says you? Then they asked John, Are you Elijah? That's Elijah. Are you Elijah? One of the greatest. He was one of the greatest of the prophets. And they had thought that John may have been him. Elijah had challenged the prophets of Baal. That's in Malachi 3, 5, and 6. Malachi chapter 4, 5, and 6 predicted that God would send Elijah before coming back to the earth. These men knew the scriptures. So they had this assumption that John would return Elijah. They thought this was John the Baptist. They thought this was John the Baptist, but it was not Elijah. Who was this Elijah in dress? See, the way Elijah dressed, he dressed John dressed like him, humble like him, appeared like him, and lived like him. So therefore, they thought it was Elijah. In Mark chapter 1, verse 6, he told them that he was not. How many times you tell people you're not what they say you are and they still won't accept it? They insisted that he identify himself as to whom he was. They insisted that they could report back to those who, and to rule who sent them. They really want to know who he was. They had to get an answer from John. Now, if you get sent by strong, powerful men, and they say, do not return without an answer, you're going to get an answer. And they had told John, we can't return back to Jerusalem. To those who sent us, unless we find out who you are, we got to have an answer. We got to have an answer. 23 and 24, he said, This is John now. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Esaias. And they which were sent were all of the Pharisees. Were all of the Pharisees. John answered them by saying that he was voice of one crying in the wilderness. In Isaiah chapter 4, 40, verse 3. The voice of him that cries in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. He was in the desert. He was preparing for him. And he was told in prophecy to do it. That he would do it. As said the prophet Isaiah. That, that they all came to John, John with the Pharisees. They knew the scriptures. They knew the scriptures. And John identified to them. That he was the one with whom the prophet had spoken of. He was telling them. That I'm the one that Isaiah spoke of. And they knew what he was saying because they knew the scriptures. The Pharisees insisted upon the literal interpretation of the law. John the Baptist denounced them as a generation of vipers. That's Matthew 3 7. And Jesus called them hypocrites. Matthew 23 27. Matthew 3 and 7. Vipers, 23 and 27, hypocrites. A hypocrite is an actor pretending to be what you're not. Aren't many of us like that today in church, which are pretending to be representing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, but yet we're not? See, he knows who we are. He knows who you are because he lives in the heart. He reads the heart. He don't listen to the mouth. He reads the heart. So we need to understand that. We can't fool him. Verse 25 and 26. And they asked him and said unto him, Why are you baptizing? Thou then, if thou art not the Christ, now Elijah, neither that prophet. And John answered them, saying, 
I baptize with water, but there it comes one that's standing one among you whom you don't know. In verse 25, the Pharisees asked him, if you're not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet, why are you baptizing? If you need one of these, why are you baptizing? John was baptizing without Jewish authority. Jews were accustomed to making converts by ceremonial cleansing, but never without an order or approval from the Sanhedrin court or from three doctrines of the law. John was baptizing contrary to the practice of, them, of their customs. And the Pharisees didn't like it. John's reason for baptizing was that the Messiah should be made manifest to Israel and the Messiah was standing among them and they didn't even know. Jesus was standing there. Now John knew he was standing there, but he knew who he was. God had allowed John to know that the Messiah was standing among them. I don't know who he is and you don't either, but he's there. And this is the one that I'm talking about. Isn't that something? Are we like that? Is God standing with us? We don't even know it. Do we acknowledge God when we know he's there? Do we see God with our natural eyes? No, we do not. So what do we do? How do we know he's there? Where does God live? He lives in our hearts. We look at verse 17 and 27 and 28. It is he coming after me, is preferred before me, and whose shoes I'm not even worthy to lace up. These things were done in the city beyond Jer Jordan, where John was baptizing. Now, he, this is what we got to understand. John said, he comes, one who I'm not before me, then I'm not even worthy to tie his shoes. I'm not even worthy to do anything. All these things were done for one reason. To show that the baptism, that the Messiah was there among them and did not even know. Now, do you know that Christ is in you, among you and through you? Know ye not that your body is the temple of God. Now, the temple of God is where the spirit of Christ lives. And you got to know and understand. That your temple is filled with the spirit of Christ. For you understand the word of God. The natural man would never understand the word of God. Only the spiritual man. Jesus said when the Holy Ghost has come. It will lead you and guide you into all truth. And bring to your remembrance the things that I have said unto you. Without the Holy Ghost you never understand. The word of God, only the natural side. Amen.